Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Well, aloha, everybody. Today is Wednesday, an exciting day after our election yesterday. A lot of things have changed. My name is Mitch Yuan. I'm a hydrogen systems program manager at my day job at the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I co-host this show with Maria Tome, who is actually out there doing her volunteer work with our robotics people, uh, helping them with their robotics competitions. So uh, what we're doing here is uh, featuring a lot of uh, HNEI technology and renewable energy, kind of focusing on near-term solutions to our day-to-day -day problems so that um, it's not like esoteric research that we won't see for 20 years. It's research that's valuable right now, today. So on my show today, I have Matthew Dubarry, originally from France, who's an assistant uh, researcher at uh, HNEI, is an expert, a world expert, I would probably say, in batteries and battery technology. And in particular, in um, finding out how healthy your battery is in your car. We've all heard about range anxiety and cars running out of oomph when you go up the poly, you know, if you have an old battery in your car. And um, Matthew has uh, developed uh, technologies that can tell you exactly how old your, or how well your battery is doing, and more important, when it might fail on you. So, very important uh, thing to know. So Matthew, um, how about telling us a little bit about your background uh, in the before we started the show? Even sure. though I've known you for like many years, I didn't know you. I knew you came from France, yep. but I didn't know what your previous uh, experience was. So give us a little bit of background. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm French, and it's pretty hard to to say with from my accent. So uh, I'm a ceramic engineer by by formation. I come from Limoges, the center of France. Is the world capital for the best plates you can have. Right. Uh, so that's my, my formation. I learned first how to make nice ceramics, plates, styles, and so on. But we also learned a lot about advanced ceramics, you know, like the one we have in space telescopes or all the microelectronic right. components. Uh, so that's my formation. And I, for my PhD, I started working on, on batteries. And the, actually, in batteries, the two electrodes are ceramics. Really? So people don't realize that, but oh. a ceramic is everything that's not organic, non-metallic. So if you have anything with oxygen really? in it, that's a ceramic. No kidding. Yeah. So when did you come to uh, Hawaii, and why, and um, how long have you been with us at HNEI? I came in Hawaii in 2005, so a long time ago already. Um, I, after my PhD, I was working on the formulation of battery electrodes, and I wanted to experience real batteries, the real commercial systems, right. and all of those aspects. So I came here in 2005 to work um, in HNEI on a fleet on EV we had, and try to analyze the usage of batteries in the field. And from there, we started looking into the diagnosis of batteries, and how can we diagnose the batteries without opening them. Right. It's pretty easy to open the battery and do a bunch of really expensive tests, and we're going to understand what happened. But then, you cannot put it back together and back in the car. So we needed to find a way to accurately diagnose the cell without destroying them, basically. Really? So that's what our focus for the past decade or so. And how successful have you been? We've been extremely successful. Uh, and the, what makes us different from other people is we put a lot of material science into it. So we just looking at the voltage of a battery. And that's enough information to tell us exactly where the lithium is in which electrode. And if you track that, you can understand from a material standpoint, standpoint sorry, what happened to the battery. Right. So I think you've brought a series of slides. Uh, they're geared to the layman, so yeah. people like me can understand it. And uh, so now would probably be a good time to start working sure. our way through. Let's go through uh, slowly enough so that if I uh, have an illuminating question, I can ask you the question. But nevertheless, uh, let's start off okay. with the slides now. So yeah, the first one, it was a little bit of a summary of what we do on batteries in uh, HNEI. So we have three main uh, focus. We do a lot of field testing. So that means that we have real batteries in the field. And we used to have some fleets of EVs. Uh, and right now, it's mostly the big batteries for the grid. And that's what you see on the top left, uh, that, that uh, white container. Oh, okay. 
Uh, that's a one megawatt battery on the Big Island. And he's been operating on the grid since 2012. So it's right. been a long running and really successful uh, program over there. Right. Uh, the second activity in the middle, uh, sorry, st still on, on slide one. The middle, we do a lot of laboratory testing. So we have a, we have a lab on, on Cook Street where we do uh, testing of uh, batteries of any size, from the pretty small ones, cell phone size, to really big ones. And so we, tell me what the lab is. I mean, what, what kind of equipment do you have? Or is that in a future slide that, I'm, that you're going to tell uh, us about? No, that's on that slide. Okay. Uh, so we have around 120 channels. So that means that we can test 100 something battery at the same time, right. 24 seven. Okay. And with our equipment, we can have a battery do whatever we want. So is this totally automated when you say 24 seven, you're not down there 24 no. seven and you don't have the staff to do that. No, no. So it's totally automated yeah, it's, it's, weekends as, as well. You just full, run these yeah, things. It's, it's fully automated. Yeah. Um, every cell is in a temperature chamber so we can control the temperature. Right. And also for safety reasons, we have a lot of, of safety. So if something happens, we can stop everything. Um, and so yeah, we, we test routinely more than one red battery at a time, 24 seven of different right. types of batteries just to understand what happen and test them under different uh, applications. Some can be for storage, some, some can be for EVs, right. and any application. So if I was building a lab like this, or if I wanted to replicate your lab, how, how much money are we talking about here? Well, it's, it's, it's pretty pricey. Uh, battery testing machines, uh, they cost probably around $80,000 for, depending on the power, 20 to 40 channels. Right. It's pretty expensive, and then you need the temperature chambers. Right. And then a lot of safety around it with, to make sure that if something happens, uh, you don't um, propagate a fire or anything like that. So, so we it, have an environmental chamber down there? Yeah. And so what kind of temperatures does that run at? We have uh, six or seven chambers in the battery test. So we testing. we can test from minus 27 right. uh, all the way to 60 degrees, or even more. But batteries don't want, really want to go above 60. So we, Are we, we talking centigrade or Fahrenheit? Uh, centigrade, sorry. Oh, OK, uh, so it gets pretty cold there. Yeah, we can. It's really important. And I'll have a slide on that later. Batteries degrade the most when you don't use them. So really? it's really important to test batteries at different temperature instead of charge, because that will tell you pretty much the, the life you can expect of, of your batteries, even if you don't use them. So actually, all of our batteries are frozen. Right okay. now. When we don't use them, we froze them. Oh, really? Yeah. OK, so I should take my little AA, AAA batteries and put them in my freezer at all? Well, AAA are not lithium batteries, so it doesn't really work uh, the same. But okay. see, if for your laptop, if you can remove the battery, yeah. you should vacuum seal it and freeze it. Really? Absolutely, oh, yes. OK, well, it's kind of hard to do with a, a Mac. Yeah, so, like the, most PC these days, you cannot remove a battery. but. Okay. Uh, old time laptops when you could remove a battery. I used to do that. Really? Just to save my battery. I'm not kidding. So I'd like to go back to slide one because I think there were some things that uh, we didn't cover there. So. Yeah, the, the last thing we do is a lot of modeling um, in large batteries. like. So what's modeling mean? Does that mean like modeling clothes on the runway? Or what oh, do no. Mean, what so, do you mean by that for, so, those, for, the, for our uh, simple yeah, no, sailors absolutely. out there? Uh, so, for an EV or for storage on the grid, it's a battery pack. And a battery pack means you have hundreds to thousands of cells plugged together. Obviously, we cannot do that in the lab. So we usually test only one battery, and then we use some virtual batteries on the computer that we, from the understanding we had in the lab, and we plug a lot of batteries together to simulate how the big battery pack would work. And it's a whole new set of challenge to deal with several thousand batteries compared to dealing with one. So, right. so we do that kind of work so that we can extrapolate what we see in the lab to what we see in the field. OK. So are we finished with slide one, or is there anything uh, else that you wanted to point out there? Well, just wanted to point out that uh, we mostly uh, sponsored by ONR, and we had DOT sponsored in the past few years, and that we are working with a lot of other universities around the world. Um, so I see Hawaiian Electric uh, logo yes. out there. Are you, what, what are you doing with Hawaiian Electric? Well, f first of all, our lab is located on uh, eco ground. So right. they graciously let us use a little bit of their ground for our lab. Right. And we're trying to work with them cl closer and closer, uh, trying to help them choose the best possible battery for um, whatever application they want. So, so they're also looking at uh, electrification of transportation. Yeah. That's like a new, um, a new area that they're getting into. Yeah. So we're helping on the, that with that? Uh, hopefully we will. Uh, yeah. It's st still in, in discussion. Um, right. 
Yeah, uh, electrification of transportation is going to be a, a real challenge, and that's we spend in the past three or four years we spend a lot of time working on what's called vehicle to grid. So what happens when you plug your EV to the grid? Right. And the idea that maybe the vehicle can help the grid uh, if there is a need, and it's, right. it raises a lot of question on the on the battery side whether it's good or not, and right. what kind of incentive you need to give the EV owner if yeah. uh, Eco takes some electricity from the battery. So we spend a lot of time working on that. In, in the past uh, three or right. four years. And I guess the effect of your on your warranty, if you have a warranty exactly. on your battery. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. So are we ready for the next slide? Yeah. Okay. So that goes with the point I made a little bit earlier, is that battery degradation is what's called path dependent. And yeah, sorry, what? Path dependent. Okay. Meaning that depending on how you use the battery, it's going to degrade differently. Okay. And that means that all the battery we have are going to degrade differently because nobody drives the car the same way as the guy next wow. to it. Yeah. So here you have a few examples of a slide of everything that can affect the lifetime of an EV battery. It can be the traffic conditions. Mm -hmm. If you drive mostly clear highways, so probably not in Hawaii, right. or heavily congested highways, is not the same usage. Same thing for the road types. Your driving habits. Are you driving fast and aggressive or are you driving slow and and steady. Um, the temperature has a big effect. And also, are you going to charge your battery? Right. Is it fast charging, normal charging? And of course, also the grid ties. Are you going to help the grid or are you just charging? Right. And that's really important because if you see the, the little uh, schematic in the down in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, battery tends to degrade linearly at first, but at some right. point they tend to, to fail really fast. Right. And when that elbow happens, going to depend a lot on how you use the battery before. Right. So all the challenge is to be able to predict when that dip is going to happen, because right. obviously you want to change your battery before that. So how much does it cost to change a battery? I mean, you know, ballpark. EV batteries are really expensive. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's probably above $10,000 for... Sorry, what, $10,000? Yes. Wow, yeah, that's a lot of gasoline. Yes, it's a lot of gasoline. Mm -hmm. but right. you, Usually, those batteries are warranted for eight years. So it's, right. I don't think that's really a problem for the EV owner. Yes, Usually, so, yeah. it falls under the warranty. But right. for the EV maker, that's a big problem because they're going to need to change batteries uh, for some customers. And what do we do with the old batteries? Where do they go? That's kind of a big unknown right now. Uh, recycling of lithium-ion batteries is extremely complicated. Is it? Yeah. And that's because it's much more complex than a lead-acid battery. The lead acid battery, they have 99 point something percent are recycled. I think that's the highest recycled item in the world. That's which lead is, acid, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is great. Lead is toxic. Yeah. And lithium ion is much more complicated. Um, first, lithium is really, really, really small. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get the lithium back, you need to remove everything else first. Right. And lithium tends to evaporate too. Really? Yeah. I thought it was a metal. Yeah, but it's really, really small. I mean, that's okay. the third lightest element, and if you, if you, and that's counting helium, so it's, okay. it's, lithium is really small. And okay. then you have all the heavy metals that are also really hard to recycle. To recycle. So it, it's still, there's a lot of people working on it, okay. but I don't think for most batteries, there's not, no real solutions quite yet on how to okay. recycle them in a okay. large, large scale, like, like we're going to need in, right. in, in a couple of years. So we hear a lot about taking an EV battery that's you know finished its life on the car and then reusing it in stationary storage. Do you, is that viable, do you think, or do we just don't know yet? Well, I mean, if, if you go back to, to the slide um, that we had before, and, 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 the, and the little schematic I have in the, in the center there and the you are here sign, basically if you take a battery from a car, you add that you are here sign and you don't know what happened before. Right. Uh, if you're on path A on that schematic, yes, it's totally worth it to put it on your home because right. you still have a lot of capacity left. But if you're on path D, the battery is going to die after a few more cycles, so it's probably not worth it. I see. So there's a lot of work to be done into developing some sort of a standard test right. that we should apply to every battery pack before we allow them to go on, on, on a house And somewhere. you have that, right? We have a technology. We just need to some funding to finalize the test and, and develop it a little bit more so it's uh, bulletproof. Okay. So uh, I think we're going to be cutting to a break now. And okay. after the break, we'll continue on with the uh, remainder of the slides. So. Sounds great. Okay. 
Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Well, here we are again, back from our break, uh, Hawaii, the uh, state of clean energy, with my guest today, uh, Mathieu Zuberi from France. And we were just going through some of his really good, simple layman language type slides. And I think we're ready to start with uh, your next slide. Yeah. And We'll just carry on working our way through the slides and chatting about them as we carry on. If we don't go through them, I will come back, I promise. Okay, fine, sounds good. So here's our next slide coming up. So that one is to illustrate how difficult it is to diagnose a battery. And if you ask someone in the university, they're gonna open the battery, do a battery of tests on it, and yes, it's gonna be a great diagnosis, but the battery is destroyed and it costs a lot of money. Right. So in, a way, in that balance, it's tipping one way. If you ask a EV manufacturer, they want the balance to tip the other way, because obviously they want to do that on board with the minimal resources. And right. as a result, usually that diagnosis is pretty poor. Right. So what we do in HNEI is we try to find something that's balanced. So we are accurate, but we don't use much resources. Okay. That was our old scheme from, from the get-go to start to develop those kind of new methods. So a really affordable and simple, easy yeah. way to measure your battery and, capacity, your battery health. Yeah, and, right. and non-intrusive that you can do in, with a simple battery tester and, and all these kind of aspects. Sounds good. Yeah. So let's have a look at the next slide. Yeah, next slide. So I put that one here because I told you earlier that battery degrades the most when you don't use them. Right. So if that's actually battery degradation doing nothing, just a different state of charge and different temperatures. Wow. So you have to remember that a typical EV battery, they change it after 20% capacity loss. So imagine there's a line at 20%. And now look at in years, how much capacity you lose just by your battery standing. So if you are at 25 degrees, so that's the red and black lines, Right. After five years, you will lose between 7 and 10% of your capacity at room temperature doing nothing. So if, if you're only allowing 20% loss on your battery before That's, you have to change it out, you've lost half your yeah. battery just by leaving it in the garage. Yeah, and if you, if you see that plot, if you increase the temperature, it goes higher. Wow. So most of the time, degradation goes higher with state of charge and temperature. So if you leave your EV park in the sun fully charged all day, yeah. That's really bad. Really? Yeah. So not good in Hawaii then? Well, if you go in a parking garage where it's in the shade, okay. or if you leave it not fully charged, you limit that, 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 that degradation. degradation. Oh, okay, very good. So that's bad or bad. It, it, it has some benefits. It kind of protects you, that kind of degradation, from doing nothing, protects you against the battery exploding a little bit. Okay. It's a, what, batteries explode? Sometimes if you don't use them properly. But the good thing is usually the, what we call calendar aging, so the aging doing nothing protects you from that. Okay. It's a, I don't have time to explain how it happens. It's a little bit fine. of a weird change of things. But that's the only good news. But you're losing a lot of capacity that's when your battery is doing nothing. Okay. So let's have a look at the next slide and we'll see some more information here. So that one, I just want to show you how complex a battery really is, because for most people, the battery is a black box. Right. Lithium ion batteries are really complex. Uh, and that's why being a ceramist helps you, because you need to understand a lot of things. Right. Uh, first, the voltage of your battery depends on what metal you have in it. Mm -hmm. And depending on the metal, you have a different voltage. So if you have iron, you're about 3.4 volts. If you have cobalt, you're much higher. And that's okay. why 
some batteries have different voltage. You know? So that's why you cannot inter interchange lithium ion batteries, because they might not use the same oh, really? elements. Oh, didn't know that. Uh, and then you need to, those active materials, so those ceramics with metals in them, usually they don't conduct electrons or ions. So they are no good in a battery. So you right. need to put a lot of additives with that for it to work properly. Okay. And then once you have that, you need to make giant tapes of electrodes. Okay. And then you roll them and you put them in the case. And right. that's, that's how you make, and, and you put some electrolytes uh, in them. So batteries are really complex systems. And the bad thing about it is that with all those steps, you have a lot of uncertainties and you have okay. a lot of small manufacturing differences. And right. so that means that no two batteries are really like. Right. And when you put, when, when you have one, it's not a problem. When you have 10,000 batteries you try to plug together, all those little changes are going to influence a lot the performance of a full-size battery pack. So I understand you're trying to get your batteries perfectly matched. Yeah. Because if there's a, dis, you know, a mismatch, that causes like a, a uh, resistance or a current that's, and your yeah, batteries heat up and... The, uh, that's, it could happen. That's the right. worst case scenario. It's, it, right. it, it, it happens rarely. Okay. But yeah, you're right. The risk if your batteries are out of sync is over discharging some cells or overcharging some cells, and that could lead to a dramatic failure. Okay. So it's really important to monitor those cell to cell variations and learn how to uh, monitor them and to mm -hmm. understand how much you have in the particular battery pack and also right. how much that affects the performance. And that's why when we were talking about modeling earlier, right. a lot of that is there, understanding the impact of those cell to cell variations and all that change with the life of the battery right. pack. So I used to drive the biggest battery electric vehicle in the world, which was a, uh, a submarine, a battery electric submarine with these monster batteries. And so one battery had enough energy in it, they say, to push the submarine, which was like 2,500 tons, over a mile in the air. Okay. And we had lots of cells, and we had to monitor each individual cell voltage, just like you talked about, to make sure we didn't have those mismatches. So yeah, kind no, of interesting. I, that's a really, really uh, big problem. And yeah. a lot of the failure we saw on, like, I think it was the Chinese overboard and all this kind of stuff, is probably because they didn't manage the batteries properly. Right. So let's have a look at your next slide. So yeah, that was to illustrate that. that when you think of an EV, people think it's a battery, but it's, it's not a battery. You have the battery pack that's made of modules that are made of single cells. Right. And even those single cells, there's probably 50 layers in them. So right. it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, lot of material. And just to give you um, an idea, I put here the number for the Tesla. Uh, in a Tesla, you have 7, 000, more than 7,000 batteries. And wow. they're the really small batteries you see in that guy's hand. Yeah. Uh, you have 7,000 of them plugged together in a Tesla. So it, My gosh. It's a lot of batteries. Yeah. So if you could go to the next slide. So that, that one, it's not only a Tesla problem. I know I have a Tesla uh, picture here, but um, the other big difficulty with EVs is to monitor the state of charge. And right. now that's changed with age. Right. And actually, it's extremely, extremely complicated. And that was an example of some Teslas that actually stopped on the road out of battery, whereas the meter was telling them, oh, you still oh, have right. a few percent. Wow, that's, that's not good. That's not good. And if you go on the next slide, I can explain you why that happens. So that's the way you calibrate the state of charge of, of a battery. So you have the, the black curve, that's called an open circuit voltage curve. That's okay. the potential of your battery at equilibrium, depending on the state of charge. So okay. what you do is you rest the battery, Mm -hmm. So you do nothing, the battery goes to its equilibrium potential, right. and then you report that on the curve, and that gives you the state of charge. So in that example, if you measure 11.5 volts on that battery pack, you are at 25% state of charge. Got it. So if you go to the next slide, the problem is with age, that open circuit voltage curve changes. Uh, and most of the time, the vehicle don't update it. And it's impossible to update it because every battery degrades differently. So right. there's no way to predict beforehand how that curve is going to change. And you can see that now that it changed, the same 11.5 volts, now it's just 10% capacity. I see. So the system is going to think you have 25% state of charge, where in right. reality you have 10. 
I see, yeah. And actually, I'm sure you saw that on your phone too. When your phone is old, you look at the battery, you have 25%, and a few minutes later, you have 5%. Yeah, exactly. What the well, heck is that all about? That's because of that. If the battery wow. is fine. It's just the way the phone monitors the state of charge is getting more and more inaccurate right. with time. And you see at the end, it's, it falls down sharply. So then it's, it, it gets accurate back towards the end. But there's that old part between 40 and 10% where it's completely inaccurate. And that's what you can see all those problems on your phone and in okay. cars. And so that can lead to problem of not knowing exactly how much you can drive. And that's still a really, really big problem. And we are, we are working on it, trying to solve that issue. So once you work on that issue, you get your models right, and you have your sensors that detect yeah. the charge. Is that something that can be distributed to all the car makers? And well, actually, for, yeah, for, uh, for that problem, we patented an, a new algorithm that can actually do that for you. Really? And it's, it out. it's what, what, really how, simple. And how long ago did you do that? Uh, a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago, right. Yeah. And so it's, it's not ac uh, granted yet, the patent, but it's, it's, in, it's in good way. So that's a University of Hawaii patent? Yes. So that could conceivably go global? It's available for licensing, so if, if anyone wants it, I'd be, uh, you can contact me and be happy to, to help yeah. them and explain them how it works. It's, it's, it could potentially solve that issue. So it's kind of almost like Gatorade, so maybe the university could actually make some money out of this uh, but, invention and help pay for our researchers' programs. And that would be great, yes. Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be great. I mean, that's obviously that's what we want from a patent. We want to use it and we, we want... Right. Battery still need a lot of, of research, and the, the main problem I see is that there's a lot of money to find new materials, there's a lot of money to deploy system, but there's right. nothing right in the middle. Right. Like the kind of work I'm doing, it's relatively hard to find some, some, some funding, and, but that's really the, the missing link between the two, and that's a really important part. But I guess it's not the flashier one, that's not, right. that's not the prettiest part in a way. So we need more funding into those kind of, of science to understand how battery behave together, or can they interact better, or right. can we maximize their life, and all those kind of aspects. So have you been talking to any, without you know, giving away any names, have you been talking to any vehicle manufacturers? Or? We, we have some leads, nothing uh, concrete yet, but okay. yes. Uh, we still have some validation work, and they still, I mean, right. you know what it is. We have the idea, we have the theory, we have some models that shows it, it works perfectly. Now we need okay. a lot of real field data to validate exactly um, okay. what we think it's going to do. So I have a question here, is uh, what is on the horizon? And I guess you've kind of partially answered that by saying, you know, you're seeking new funding, you're talking to vehicle manufacturers. Is there anything I'm missing here that you um, think that people out there should know about? No, I think we, we, we are working hard, and we, we really want to make sure that batteries are a, have a good future, whether it's in EVs or on the grid, and we're going to get more and more batteries every day. So here we are in Hawaii developing world-class technologies that could go global. Yeah, hopefully. Isn't that pretty exciting? It well, is. Well done, Hawaii, and well done to you. And Matthew, thank you so much. You're welcome. Really thank you. appreciate thank you for it. having me. It's great having you here. I mean, you know, it has an office only about 50 yards away from my, where I work, and I didn't know all this stuff until we st uh, had the show here. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Okay. So that completes our uh, episode for this week. I'm not sure who we're going to have next week. I'm still working on that. These weeks flash by very quickly when you're trying to find guests to come on the show, but it's uh, been very uh, uh, worthwhile, I think. And remember, what we're trying to do is to tell uh, people here in Hawaii what we're doing at the University of Hawaii to make life better for our individual uh, ratepayers who help you know, fund our university. So thanks, thanks again.